My name is James McLean. I'm a fish curator here at the Natural History Museum. John Reeves moved to Canton in China in 1812 to act as an assistant tea inspector for the East India Company. Because of his unique position, he was able to acquire many interesting specimens that were unknown to Western scientists. And these were sent back to a very eminent Victorian naturalist called Sir John Richardson. The majority of fish specimens that we have here at the Natural History Museum are like this red mullet here. They've been pickled in alcohol. Um, alcohol is a good preservative. We have things going back to the late 1700s. Um, but the very obvious thing you can see about it is that it isn't red anymore. This is a very typical problem with uh, pickling things. And just as soon as they, they die, really, they, they lose a lot of their colour. Compare it to this recently deceased red mullet and you can just see just how much colour has been lost. Alongside the fish specimens that Reeves sent back to John Richardson, he also sent back some incredible illustrations. These pictures here show very accurately what the animals were like um, in life or shortly after death. So you can get an idea of the vivid colours that the fish would have had when they were alive. And a lot of these colourations and markings and things would have been lost or reduced when the fish were pickled. When Richardson was uh, examining the material that Reeves had sent, he would quite often find fishes that had never been described before. So when he writes about them, his descriptions are what we call original descriptions. They're the first descriptions of a new species. And the specimens that are used for these original descriptions are called type specimens. Not all the specimens that Reeves collected made their way back to Richardson. But around 80 or so didn't uh, reach England, so Richardson only had the drawings to go on. Um, and in some cases, for example, this catfish here, Himalodus fulvi draco. The description that Richardson wrote is based entirely on the illustration. This means that the illustration is the type, and it's called an iconotype. Not only are these illustrations of huge artistic and historical value, they're also very important scientifically. These iconotypes here must be referred to by any scientists that are investigating the species which are based upon these illustrations.